Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Summary. Today's podcast is looking at aligners and challenging movements with them and what protocols can be designed around the evidence to deliver more predictable outcomes. This was an excellent lecture given by Bill Lehman at this year's AAO. Just to recap, the podcast is the opinion piece of myself and the Orthodontics in Summary team. We do our best to ensure it's as accurate as we can, but may not 100% represent the original lecture. So Bill Lehman went on to describe three main challenging movements with aligners, that of maxillary extrusion, posterior intrusion, and controlled expansion. Now the premise here, as he began, was that the refinement rate of aligners is 2.5 per patient. This was Neil Kravitz's study from 2022, and he mentioned how one in six patients switch from aligners to fixed appliances due to not achieving the desired movements. Bill Lehman questioned this and suggested that through correct staging and synergistic movements, we can reduce those refinement rates. So starting off with incisor extrusion, Bill Lehman broke down why this is a difficult movement to deliver with aligners as a default. And that's because of the lack of undercuts which are present. Aligners will squeeze the tooth to try and extrude it. There's not much tooth engagement taking place, creating the opposite effect which results in the aligner losing its retention. There's something else about aligners. Due to the closed system of aligners, patients who require extrusion may have overlap of the contact points or slipped contact points. This means that they can have interproximal binding, which then takes place, stopping the movement occurring in the aligner. So what's the solutions to incisor extrusion? Well, first of all, Bill Lehman suggested creating an undercut using a, a horizontal attachment. Now, that may not be any new news, but looking at the evidence from Grudy 2023, it doesn't really matter what the attachment design is as long as it allows an undercut to be achieved. Next, if there are interproximal binding that takes place, well, create space. Bill Lehman suggested 0.1 millimeter between adjacent teeth to relieve those contact points. Now, what stages should take place. And I thought this was really insightful use of how aligners interact with tooth surfaces. He first described going for proclination as the first movement to take place. That allows full engagement to play, take place with the palatal surface of the aligner on the tooth. Subsequent to this, then there is extrusion and retraction, which then takes place. And the beauty of this is that there's full engagement of the labial face and that horizontal attachment, achieving more predictable movement in an ultimate vertical plane of space. Now, we have to also be critical here and say there is some round tripping which has occurred in that process. But within it, we're maximizing the surface contact of the aligner on the tooth, which is those in the labial and on the lingual faces, to achieve what is a vertical movement really clever and intelligent application of how aligners interact with two surfaces. The next topic was posterior intrusion. So why is posterior intrusion difficult? Well, there's multiple teeth that need to be intruded and there's really not much anchorage as there is just the anterior teeth. Once more, Bill Lehman described something I've not come across is that as posterior intrusion takes place, there's also some mesial tipping of the posterior teeth that occurs, which is unwanted. This was shown by FANS 2022 study. There's also the possibility of having tipping taking place in a buccal and lingual direction. How to improve posterior intrusion? Bill Lehman suggested breaking up the anchorage through sequential intrusion, starting off with the maxillary premolars to begin with. Once the maxillary premolars are intruded, then to move on to those posterior molars. What about the mesial tip? Well, accounting for this and knowing it's going to happen means we can carry out some distal crown tip within our aligner plan and therefore counteracting this mesial tipping tendency through posterior intrusion. Horizontal attachments aid as well, and that's both buccal and palatal. Bill Lehman gave special attention to considering lingual molar attachments in the maxillary arch to aid posterior intrusion taking place. Bill Lehman suggested TADs are not always needed for this movement. Over 5,000 times a day, the occlusion is engaging with this hard surface 
and therefore this may enable posterior intrusion through masticatory forces, not just the orthodontic forces from the aligner itself. The final topic Bill Lehman spoke on was controlled expansion. So why is this difficult? Well, aligners will typically tip teeth buckily through the expansion process. This is true actually for any orthodontic appliance which is not orthopedic, and this can create occlusal interferences. The downside of aligners compared to fixed appliances is that they do lack rigidity of the tray, and that varies depending on where the tray finishes, with a straight trim line offering more rigidity than a beveled trim line. And also planning-wise, if we expect skeletal expansion to take place with non-orthopedic appliances, including aligners, we are destined to always have dental changes and poor outcomes that occur. Where do aligners expand the most? Well, it tends to be in the premolar region. And what the research suggests is that the more posterior we go, the less expansion occurs with the least happening in the molar region. How can we improve, how can we improve expansion? Well, we should plan around what is predictable, and the most expansion that occurs is in the premolar region. So Bill Lehman suggested expect 70% of the premolar expansion to occur, and less in the molar of around 50%. The canine is the least, by the way, at 46%. And this holds true in the research looking at Zoe's study from 2020, which showed we can get around 3.4 millimeters of premolar expansion, but only around 1.7 in the canine region. So set expectations around a maximum of four millimeters expansion was Bill Lehman's conclusion when it came to looking at expansion. What I really loved about Bill Lehman's lecture is he took difficult topics and described from the evidence what the challenges are and how they can be managed with a protocol that he had proposed. His conclusions were fantastic. For incise the extrusion, procline the teeth first, add a horizontal attachment, extrude, then retract include some IPR in the process. Fantastic, four key aspects to having reliable maxillary extrusion from our understanding of the evidence, and also aligner mechanics. For posterior intrusion, stage it. Start with the premolars, then work your way through to the molars. Add distal tip to avoid the mesocrown tip which will occur. Controlled expansion. It's effective mostly in the premolar region and plan around that in the case as a consequence. I want to conclude just with a final remark. I was in conversation with the eminent Jay Bowman and he mentioned about aligners and overcorrection. And his statement was this. If you don't plan in overcorrections, you cannot get corrections. A simple statement to help us understand and plan predictable outcomes with aligners. I'd like to just end this episode by thanking the orthodontics and summary team, which I do not thank enough. And this podcast could not take place without them. Chenya Kapoor really helped with this with this podcast episode, as well as my colleague Abdullah Sharifan, based over in Ireland. I'd like to thank uh, I'd like to thank James Andrews, based over in Australia, and also Kwas Al Hakim, who also helps out with the blog. The sponsors TOC Dental and the Line Attentive Fellowship, and of course, this would not be possible without the support of you guys. We have now had up to two hundred and fifty thousand plays and hits over the last four years since the podcast started. I'd like to thank you guys so much for staying tuned in and going on this journey of orthodontic education with me. As always, please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.